Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Straight into it today, mainly because there's two things that we're going to look at. So the two things are connected in, in a way, obviously, which would make sense, which is why we're making this content today. But the knives that we are going to be looking at um, are the Atlantic and the Windmill. Now, these are a collaboration between Henny Haynes here in the UK and Real Steel. So there are, there's actually four knives um, and these, these are two of the four knives. They're all purchased separately, um, but the collaboration, there's, there's, there's this series. If you're a completionist, then you might want to get all four, but um, two of the knives, I think it's the Lansdowne and the Windmill, are very similar, but the, there's one difference which we'll, we'll have a look at today. Um, but there is, there's a spear point, there's a worn cliff sheep's foot, and there's a tanto um, uh, knife geometry to them. That, that's really the main difference between them. Um, so we'll have a look at today at versions that I got, which are, as I say, uh, so we, <laughs> we've, got, we've got the Atlantic and we've got the windmill. As you usually do, what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around so we can take a closer look while I'm doing that. If at any point you do enjoy this content, find it mildly amusing, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button and share. That would be absolutely amazing. Let's see if we can hit 10K followers by the end of 2022. That would be amazing. But for now, let's turn the camera around and uh, let's take a closer look. Okay, so before we start, just to make 100% clear, the one here on the left-hand side, this is the Atlantic, and the one here on the right-hand side, um, this is the windmill. When I hold the two together, hopefully you'll be able to see that the, the, the body or the scales here that both of the knives are attached to are identical. So. When I go through some of the details of each of them, you, you, I'll be able to skip through. What, what I'll probably do is I'll have a look at the Atlantic first, and then we'll have a look at the windmill, because the windmill does hide something slightly different in here. Uh, but a lot of the dimensions between the two are... Well, they, they are identical. They, they pretty much are the same knife, just with a different blade geometry on each of them. So what I'll do for now is I'll just put the windmill down and we'll have a look through the Atlantic. As we usually do, we'll go through some measurements, we'll go through some materials, and then we'll have a look at the knife itself. Um, so as far as the closed length, the closed length here, all which is pretty much just the construction of the, 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 the scales or the handle itself, there is no extended tang or anything like that. There are no uh, extra springs or anything like that that, that appear. Certainly none of the... Um, None of the, the the springs here on the back are visible. It's it's the uh, the, the scales is one whole piece of folded metal, um, and the, the the closed length comes in at 93 millimeters from end to end. When it's opened, um, it is really a perfect kind of EDC size. So when it is fully opened, it comes in at 166 millimeters. The blade itself, if I show you here. The blade uh, from the ricasso all the way to the tip comes in at 74 millimeters. The most important thing here in the UK is when we're talking about blades and cutting edges as we discern the difference between the length of the complete blade and the cutting edge itself. So the cutting edge going from the choil to the tip through the, through the, through the belly here comes in at 71 millimeters. So this is definitely classed, uh, as far as the length is concerned, this is definitely classed as a UK friendly or a UK knife law friendly knife. Knife. I, I know I'm splitting hairs with, with mentioning UK really you know there's four separate countries five if you include the kingdom and the moorlands um, that all have slightly different laws but generally to, to clump them together as a, a UK friendly knife I, I think is fair to say as far as the action on how this locks, it is a slip joint, which again, that will make this perfectly legal and friendly for you to carry um, in a I suppose in a, in a proper manner. If, if you're using this in an, in an improper way, then you might get pinched by the fluff. But if you're using it in a proper way, proper and non-offensive way, then you're not going to get pinched by the fluff. Um, hopefully that makes sense. That, that should always be the underlying tone of any sort of knife use kind of 
carry um, laws. <laughs> um, sorry, I went off on a bit of a tangent there talking about pinching by the fluff. If you're from the UK, that would make total sense. If you're not from the UK, then I'd probably Google it. But don't worry, it is safe to Google at work. So, uh, cutting edge 71 millimeters. Um, the, the, the actual construction from this, so you be, hopefully be able to see you have a stainless steel handle and then you also have a stainless steel blade. The blade itself is constructed from 8 CR14 MOV steel. Now, if you're into your steels or whether you're not into your steels, so 8, um, 8 CR. 8CR14 MOV is what's really classed as a budget steel. Um, it's not a bad steel, don't get me wrong, it's certainly not a bad steel, but there are nicer, there are more hard wearing steels out there. It's a stainless steel, so you don't have to worry as much about um, maintenance as such. You certainly don't have to oil this or have to do anything like that with it. Um, and I think the beauty of uh, 8 I've forgotten it again, it's 8CR14 MOV, um, is, the, is the fact that it's got quite a lot of good qualities that you'd expect from, from a modern knife. It keeps a reasonably good edge. If you do need to resharpen it, it's very simple to resharpen. Um, you can certainly do it with, with you know anything that you can pick up pretty much online, even some of the cheaper sharpening solutions. Um, just running this across the strop a few times a day will certainly keep a brilliant edge on it. It does come from the factory. Now, I'm just checking for burrs. So there's there's no burrs on either side. So it would lead me to believe that, you know, it's, it's a very good grind on there. Just looking at it, it's definitely an even grind across the cutting edge all the way across it. On the rear side, apart from maybe here where it gets down into, into the choil here at the bottom, um, it, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, what's the word, uh, even uh, all, all the way through, through where the grind is. Um, one thing, and this is one thing that I noticed today while, while I was, while I was looking at this before my lunch. So, um, hopefully you'll be able to see, so there is an H here and there is an H that's cut into the scales. So the H is for the, Hen, uh, is for Henny Haynes, who, who's part of the collaboration between Henny Haynes and Real Steel. But I've also noticed that there is, there's, there's actually no real steel um, branding on this whatsoever. It, it's all purely Henny Haynes, Henny Haynes branded. Um, so moving away, f oh, actually no, carry on with the knife. You'll be able to see there is a little, th there's a, uh, actually a decent sized thumb neck on there. Uh, you have a choil here before it gets to the Ricasso. It is a flat grind uh, with a satin finish, which is, I, I generally quite like satin. And I know it's a it's a bit of a Marmite, again, if from the UK, that will, that will make sense. Uh, Marmite kind of, uh, kind of finish to it, but I, I like satin. It, it doesn't keep your finger uh, oils on it as much. Um, and then it is a spear point rather than a drop point. Now, I've had to check this because it says that it's a spear point, but if I know my points, and I, I mean, I'm no real massive kind of, you know, on this, but I'd say that's a drop point rather than a spear point because a spear point, the point of that should move. There is a larger belly than there is spine. But, you know, it says on the website that it's a spear point. Eh, we'll argue about that one. But anyway, so that, that's the actual blade itself. Oh, and thickness of the blade comes in at 2.1 millimeters. So it's, it's reasonably thick and it's got, a, it's, got a, it's got a good size to it. Now, I, I have to say that the, the corners on this, hopefully you'll be able to see here, you can, you can shave, you can shave a, a, a thumbnail with it. So I know you wouldn't use this for striking a, a rod, especially open, but you, you could definitely do that whilst it's closed. It, it's, it's got quite sharp, uh, corners on there. Um, so getting back to the scales, hopefully you'll be able to see that the scales on this are a tried and tested formula, mainly because these are possibly one of the oldest examples of scales that you'll find where you have a knife and then you have a folded piece of metal that goes around the knife. Originally it would have been with the extended tang that went down there and then they'd probably wrap it in something, but um, due to modern processes we've been able to make sure that you can fit a folding knife into 
into uh, these sort of folded scales. I want to say, and I'd lo actually I'd love to hear, just in case I am wrong on this, but I believe these folded scales, especially prevalent in Japanese style knives, um, especially folding knives like this, and, and very rudimentary, almost kind of working men, working women's kind of knives. You certainly see them a lot like that, um, especially with uh, friction folders. But you know, so it uses stainless steel on here. You can see that here is the pivot pin. On the back, you can see uh, the pivot pin as well. And then we have two extra um, pins in here for the retention of the spring on, on the back. Now the spring on this is a, it is, it is a back spring. Oh, so it's similar to how you get on Victorinox knives. So the spring itself runs down the length on the inside um, of the handle. You can't really see it here, but you can, you can just see that gap there. So, oh, no, we've just gone out of focus. The gap here, that, that millimeter or two gap is on the inside so that as this pushes down, uh, the spring has, has uh, enough room to push back up. Um, as far as locking positions, the, it doesn't have a, a half lock. I suppose I shouldn't say lock because it's not necessarily a lock, it's more of a detent, isn't it? So. Um, I, you don't want to talk about UK friendly knives, world friendly knives and talk about locking or locks because they, they don't lock, they have detents. But there's there's no half detent. Uh, it comes round roughly to about the seven o'clock position, and then you'll find that it snaps in. The snap to this, it's a nice, it's a good positive snap. It's not the type of snap that you get in a Victoria Knox where you just know you're going to get bitten at some point. Um, it's just yeah, it's just it's just nice, um, and it's it's tough enough that the spring in the back here is tough enough that it keeps the blade in, um, so that you, you certainly don't have to worry about that coming out. Out. I think the last thing that I, I really kind of missed is um, there is a small lanyard hole I guess you could call it a lanyard hole if you wanted to uh, to put a lanyard through here you can do and there is a deep pocket carry clip on the back which is also reversible if you wanted to do that as well now it definitely is deep pocket because the uh, the clip itself comes right up to the edge um, of the uh, of, of the top of the knife now I'm going to bring back in the windmill because the main reason um, I mentioned at the beginning of this, as far as the dimensions are concerned, let's bring back. Sorry, let's bring back the Atlantic. You'll be able to see, hopefully, that they are identical. And now I'm just talking about the scales here. So with the windmill, when it is closed, it measures the same um, 93 millimeters. When it is opened, this one is slightly longer, and that is because the geometry of the knife itself has changed. So the geometry on uh, on the Atlantic this is that spear point which I actually think is a, is, is a, a drop point uh, and on uh, on the windmill it uses a sheep's foot worn cliff um, geometry now the main reason why the sheep's foot is longer getting back to talking about uh, with the cutting edge um, the straightest distance between two points as hopefully you'll all know is, is a line so from the from the uh, choil here to the tip of the knife is pretty much a straight line um, the cutting edge is still 74 millimeters as is the cutting edge on here but because we have a, a curl to the belly on the Atlantic it just brings that back down whereas if the this was to follow a straight line you would be able to see that it would be uh, the same length as this one so the full length of the um of the windmill whilst open rather than it being 60 166 millimeters on the atlantic this one is 169 millimeters the blade length um is oh I think I might have made an error in my notes. The, the, actually, sorry, the cutting edge, the cutting edge is still 74 millimeters. The blade edge will, edge will probably be a few more millimeters longer than that because of, of the, the, the Ricasso here. So apologies about that. But yeah, it's, it's, hopefully you can see here, it's, it's only a few extra millimeters. Everything else, you know, the construction's the same. The knife is still made from um, that one that I keep forgetting. Do you know, I could turn it over because it does say it here, it says, it says eight, CR 14 MOV. They should just name them something something simple like knife blade made by made from Dave material, uh, whereas the other one's made from Shirley material. Obviously, um, all the same. Pins are the same. Construction's the same. We have the two uh, the, the the two bolts here 
for the springs on the back. The major difference that you will notice with this one is when I turn it on the side and I bring back in the Atlantic, um, the windmill is a lot wider and that is because the windmill if I just close the blade you'll see here on the back we have an extra little thumb neck which allows you to open out the scissors. Now the scissors on this I've been using this for the last few weeks and the scissors are really good I have now I, I, I was going to say I have no complaints and I definitely do have no complaints what I would do is, I certainly think about if there's anything that I would change. If there was something that I would change, it's down to the manufacturing process. The, the process on this is actually really good. So you can still shave the, uh, you can still shave a thumbnail uh, with the back of the main blade. You can't do that with the scissors. They, ha they have been rounded sufficiently enough so that when you're using this with your thumb, um, it, it, there's, there's no sort of hot spots. We're just kind of, regular use stupidly because I've been testing this going oh how much can I do this until it hurts um, if you've got lots of cutting or you need to cut through something that's you know thicker than maybe a piece of paper or two um, you, you find that after a while it just gets a little bit hot what I would do is I would extend this material here across the back so that you could fold this over so it would make the material the width of the two what that would then it would still allow you to be able to close this and close the knife completely but it would just widen uh, widen that so that you could use it now am I being picky hell yes I'm being picky that is I mean that is next level pickiness as far as how I would change this. This is an 18 pounds knife or 18 quid if you're here in the Kingdom of the Moorlands. Always make sure if you're visiting the Kingdom of the Moorlands that you check the exchange rate between pound and quids or dollars, you know, where it is that you're coming from. Um, but I'm being super picky on that. The scissors are perfectly serviceable scissors. In fact, I'd say that these scissors are actually nicer to use than some other scissors on Leatherman's um, and Victorinox. They, they're actually really good. I'd looked at a few of these knives in the past and thought, no, I, I just don't like the idea of a scissor and a knife on here. The windmill has changed my idea of, of, of how useful having those two as a combination can be. Um, it doesn't add much to the size. It doesn't add much to the weight. Um, I think the, uh, the, uh, the Atlantic comes in at about 50 grams um, and the windmill comes in an extra 10 grams. You know, it really, no, extra five grams, sorry. It really isn't that much of a difference between the two. But there you have, so you have the Atlantic here on the left and you have the windmill here on the right. Now, I do need to bring in another knife and that's because this is a knife that I have reviewed recently. So this is the Boca Atlas. Hopefully you'll be able to see that they are very similar. In fact, if you look at the pivot pin on there, it's pretty much identical. And when I turn it over, you'll see it is the same pivot pin. And they have the same detent pin in the, well, I suppose they're all the same anyway, but even the clip looks very similar. Now, this is made by Boca. I believe these are made in Germany. And these, this is made by Real Steel, which I think at the moment they're making these not in Germany. Where are they making these? I think they're making these in China. No, I will check that. I will check that. But they are very, very similar knives. As far as the dimensions, you'll be able to see that they're roughly the same. They have roughly the same geometry on the blade this one says hi i'm a slit uh, hi i'm a drop point this one says hi i identify as a spear point um so you know there's a subtle difference between the two the other major difference is that the way that the um the scales on here so this has copper scales so you, you can definitely feel the difference in your hand uh with the boca one it, it's definitely a lot heavier you know the difference between uh, copper and uh, and stainless steel but the difference with this one is hopefully you'll be able to see to shave off a few millimeters across the back here they've had this spring and they've exposed the spring here in the back where the detent works so as i pull the spring as i pull the blade round you'll be able to see that the spring does lift up off the spine of the off the back of the scales whereas the difference with this one is in fact if I bring this back out again hopefully you'll be able to see that that's pretty much flush the only difference is is the is the is the is the 
the, the thickness of the copper here at the top whereas with the uh, whereas with the Atlantic you can see that there is a millimeter or two difference there because as this closes um, the retention or the detent spring here in the back is all concealed perfectly within uh, within the knife itself or within the scales itself Last thing that I just completely forgot to notice when I just noticed when it was there down on the floor, as far as across the back of the scales, um, they're identical. It's still that, that really nice folded steel. The subtle difference is with the windmill is that it just has some holes drilled into that. I don't know if that will really save much on weight. I think it's just a nice feature that they decided to add just to make it so that it's different between, uh, between the two knives. I definitely think that the Atlantic and the windmill are great knives. Um, you know, they are, as I've said probably quite a few times already, you know, they are very budget friendly knives. And I think they're a great addition, mainly just down to the price. Um, the windmill, at the time of filming, the windmill I think was about 18 pounds. The Atlantic is 15 pounds. And the other two knives that just have the single blade rather than the one with the, uh, with the scissors on there, I think they're all 15 pounds each. Now 15 pounds or you know the extra 18 for for the scissors, sorry the extra three pounds which makes it up to 18 for, for the scissors on there. I think it's just great value for money. Um, whether you have these and you keep them as your nearest and dearest, whether you have these and you abuse them because they're priced within that kind of beta knife range, um, I think that that, yeah, they're, they're cracking little knives. I certainly take my hat off uh, to Henny Haynes uh, and Real Steel for their collaboration on these and yeah, putting together two of four uh, great knives. Now, I'll leave some links in the description below. They aren't affiliate links. Um, I certainly don't get any kickback from Henny Haynes or Real Steel for, for, for adding those, but if you want to uh, check those out, definitely check those out. There's an extra point. So I was talking to somebody, I, I was showing these off on Instagram. Um, somebody contacted me and said, you know, they're really nice. How, how can I get them? I'm, I'm down in Oz. Hi, Jason, by the way. Um, and I said, well, you know, they're, they're available here in the UK. He's in Australia. Um, bought one from Henny Haynes and had it posted to Australia from Henny Haynes. So it would appear as though international shipping from Henny Haynes is there. So wherever you are around the world, you should hopefully be able to pick one of these up and have it have it, have it posted to you. But check with Henny Haynes first, and they'll um, they'll be able to tell you whether whether or not they can do that. Um, I'll leave some of my um, social media links below as well, always on Instagram, tend to be on there more than Facebook, but yeah, you can you can find me on Instagram at moreland at underscore edc. Um, but yeah, I guess for now, don't forget to stay safe, stay Moorlander, and stay edc. Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Today we're going to have a look at uh, two knives. Now these knives are part of a set of four, although, I mean, you don't have to purchase... No, let's start again.